Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Women's Export Academy, Module 3 on Logistics for E-Commerce. Welcome. As you know, this is a collaborative opportunity from US, UPS and US Commercial Service, our Global Diversity Export Initiative and Women's Global Trade. So I'm Karen Parker. I'm with the US Commercial Service in Austin, Texas. Welcome. I uh, hope you all heard my colleague Jessica on the first session, how we have a, a worldwide offices around the world to help you export. So we wanna recognize our many partners today. Uh, we, we really appreciate them for their outreach uh, collaboration. So we have the city of Dallas, Texas, Colorado Office of Economic Development and International Trade, Minority Business Office, the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry, the Minority Business and Export Assistance, uh, Export Centers, U.S. Department of Commerce in Arizona, Dallas, Houston, Louisiana, and San Antonio, the National Association of Women Business Owners, the New Mexico Small Business Development Center Network, the Organization of Women in International Trade, the Texas Department of Agriculture, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council and the Women's Business Enterprise Council South. So we all use e-commerce to buy products nowadays online. So what does your company need to know about e-commerce platforms? How to take payments as part of the e-commerce business process? Do you have a business strategy to identify areas of your business to successfully sell and compete in cross-border e-commerce initiatives. So we have two great speakers today. I can't wait for them to, for you to hear from them. So first, we're going to hear from Anoja Vignas Warren. She's a learning accelerator facilitator at Shopify. We're so glad to have her. She assists individuals in fostering leadership skills, help them align, connect, and grow. Anoja has also held a support av uh, advisor position at Shopify, where she was helping merchants run their stores and gained a vast knowledge of expertise in this area. She's a South Asian woman who is passionate about eliminating the barriers to entrepreneurship and seeing more underserved communities in e-commerce. She's based in Calgary, originally from Toronto, making her way east to the West Coast. We're going to wait and do her Q&As, or you can put them in so that she can answer before. So get your Q&As in early for Anoja. I'm going to go ahead and introduce James so we can smoothly move over to him after her presentation. James Bledstone is the Director of the U.S. Department of Commerce Commercial Service E-Commerce Solutions Center which focuses on advancing the expertise and knowledge of cross-border e-commerce and digital strategy, strategies to all U.S. small and medium-sized businesses. James is a U.S. Air Force veteran, has a master's degree from the University of Washington, Jackson School of International Studies and International Relations, a BA in Political Science and China Studies from Washington State. James is based out of Tacoma, Washington. So Anoja, please, let's get started. All right, um, trying to turn it up. Oh. One second, there we go. <laughs> Hi there, everyone. Thanks so much, Karen, for that introduction. Um, it's so great to be here. I'm so excited for today. And I think it's just awesome that UPS is doing this Women in Export project like it's just phenomenal um so yeah as karen mentioned i was a support advisor at shopify and i really enjoyed helping people learn more about shopify and that's exactly why i'm here today so let's just get started i'm going to share my screen here just give me a second It wants to mute me when I share my screen. So I just need to, there we go. All right, I believe you should be able to see my screen. Um, are you seeing the intro to Shopify? 
Slide yes, through? everything's yeah. good. Perfect. Just want to confirm. So yeah, now what exactly is Shopify? At a glance, Shopify is a provider of essential internet infrastructure for commerce. We've created and continue to develop software that makes it easy to get your business online, whether you're just starting out or if you're already an established business. Now you're probably seeing the word merchant on my screen here. And at Shopify, we refer to our users as our merchants. As of March 31st, 2022, our merchants have collectively made $496 billion in sales and we have millions of merchants in over 175 countries. In 2021 alone, we recorded 600 million online shoppers purchasing from Shopify merchants. And as you can see, this number has consistently been growing since 2015, and we don't expect this to stop anytime soon. As the world evolves, more and more people will continue to shop online, and that's why it is so important to make your business's presence online. Our multi-channel front end enables our merchants to connect with uh, their buyers in multiple ways. They can set up their online store. They can also integrate with as many channels as they need to to reach their audiences, whether it's just their brick and mortar shop, um, online marketplaces such as Amazon, eBay, Facebook, social media platforms. And the best part is, is, is that they can do this with just a device and an internet connection from basically anywhere in the world. Now, like I said, Shopify is for businesses of all sizes. If you're an entrepreneur that's just starting out, then our basic and light plans may be suitable for you. If you're a small or medium business, then you may want to consider the Shopify plan, which is sort of our middle tier plan or even the advanced plan. And then we have our Shopify Plus plans, which is for very large brands, um, which you can see starts at $2,000 per month. It's for those, you know, very well-established brands that are bringing in a, a very consistent revenue stream. Um, so, you know, big or small, Shopify is really here to try and meet the needs of everyone. And that's exactly why our mission is to make commerce better for everyone. It's our number one focus and our filter for everything we do. We aim to provide amazing tools for our merchants as well as our buyers, as well as their buyers. And we want to continually evolve our products to make it a better experience for everyone, regardless of race, gender, socioeconomic background, et cetera. Now I'm gonna do a quick poll here. Uh, I believe Maria or Karen is going to pull up some polls for, for us here. So I have two questions for the audience. Um, now the first one, how are you currently selling your products? Uh, I think I, is the poll up or? I'm sharing it in one moment. Let me, one okay. moment. Okay. No worries. Okay, there it goes. Perfect. So for the first option, in-person only, even if you maybe have a website where it's just like promotional, just information about your business, but you're not actually making sales through it and it's really just you're making sales in person, whether that's in your own retail store or in pop-up shops or, you know, like big box retail partnerships, then I'd suggest choosing that option. Otherwise, you also have selling with an online system that is not Shopify. You might also be selling on Shopify already or you might not be selling yet so go ahead okay we got some numbers okay perfect I'm just going to note this down and you'll all see why in a bit uh, so not yet okay so it seems like um, most of the audience is not selling yet all right perfect good to know and then we can go on to the next poll now Right. So aside from selling online with a website, where else are you interested in selling? There is Facebook, Instagram, Google, in person, um, other social media platforms such as TikTok, Pinterest and more, or other online marketplaces like Etsy, eBay, Amazon. Um, and I'd like everyone to select their top three for that question.
I know that everyone is having their coffee. We're seeing almost 55% of the response. We, oh, we're now to 62%. Um, I get it. It's morning. It's a Thursday. It's the end of the week. People are getting tired. I completely get that. But okay, perfect. We got some answers here. So uh, looks like at the top we have other online marketplaces. Let's see, eBay. We have Google and in person. Okay, perfect. Thanks, everybody. So you'll see in a bit why I asked those questions. Um, but for now, uh, like I was saying, our mission is really to enable economic independence for all, and we do this through the tools and features that come with our software. So let's touch on just a few of the product lines that we have here at Shopify. So Shopify shipping, this wouldn't be a UPS event if we weren't talking about shipping. So Shopify shipping is really a streamlined solution for mer merchants to make shipping just one less thing that they have to worry about. Uh, we work directly with shipping carriers like UPS, for example, to provide negotiated competitive rates for domestic and international services. You can get up to 88% off of normal shipping rates and these savings are automatically included no matter what plan you're on. Uh, you can also print shipping labels directly from your order page, stick it on your package, schedule a pickup from whichever carrier you're printing the label from, and that way you're saving a lot of time with that, with, you're saving a lot of time because you're not having to go to the post office to drop off your packages, and that gives you more time to focus on other aspects of your business. And finally, with Shopify shipping, you can pass on your discounted rates to customers to ensure you're always charging an accurate amount. Um, according to the Baymart Institute, nearly 50% of cart abandonments that they surveyed on e-commerce sites in 2020 was due in part to extra shipping fees and costs. So you definitely want to make sure that you've got a good shipping strategy and that you're not overcharging your customers because that will cause them to walk away at times. Um, so essentially, Shopify shipping takes one of the complicated, tedious aspects of your business and streamlines it so you can focus on more impactful tasks. Next step, uh, so the Shopify point of sale. So some of you mentioned that you are interested in selling in person as well. Uh, Shopify has an in-house point of sale system that's fully integrated with your online store, which makes things like managing inventory and products a much easier task than if you were to have two separate systems to deal with your online store and your point of sale. Uh, we've seen that point of sale is the second largest source of GM fee for our merchants. So we get how important this is. We have a POS app that you can download on an iPhone, iPad, or Android dev uh, device, which connects to your Shopify store. And as you can see, we have two uh, different POS plans. There's the POS Lite and the Shopify POS Pro. The POS Lite is included on all Shopify plans. If it's just like one location that you have or you just kind of do pop-up shops or farmers markets, for example, the Shopify POS Lite uh, option is would be great for you. Shopify POS Pro is $89 USD per month per location, and it just comes with a few more uh, features than the POS Lite, all of which you can find if you go to shopify.com slash POS. And funding. So I want to talk about funding because I'm guessing most of you are here because you want to grow your business or at some point once you've started a business, you, the ultimate plan for any entrepreneur is growth, right? Um, and at some point you may start looking into funding options to help you scale your business to global heights. In the US, women owned businesses now represent 42% of all businesses. Um, oh, sorry, I'm just noticing, I don't think my, no, nope, never mind. Ignore me. Um, so yeah, 42% of all businesses. They employ 9.4 million people and report $1.9 trillion in revenue. That's right, trillion like with the T. That's a huge amount that our women entrepreneurs are bringing into the economy. Yet 62% of women entrepreneurs report that they experience some form of gender bias during the funding process. 
For Shopify store owners, funding through Shopify Capital is an option that skips the lengthy application process and determines eligibility based on a store's merit, not gender. You can use Shopify Capital to support everything from marketing efforts to payroll funding or basically any of the things that you see here on the screen. If a store is eligible for funding, they'll see their offers in their Shopify dashboard where they can review and accept these offers. Once accepted, funds typically are dispersed within two to five business days. It's really that quick of a process. Um, in quarter one of 2022, we've advanced $346.7 million in funding and $3.3 billion cumulatively since Shopify Capital launched in April 2016. Another great thing about Shopify Capital is that repayment terms are flexible and are calculated as a percentage of net sales. So this means that borrowers will never have to worry about meeting higher fixed repayments during slower times and can just repay more when their sales are actually stronger. As you become more established on Shopify, we want to help you scale your business even further. And that's why Shopify Capital Funding was created to reduce those barriers of, attending, of, of attaining funding. And it really all comes back to our mission of making commerce better for everyone. Now, these are just a couple of features and resources that we're proud of, and there are a ton more that I could talk about all day long. But at this point, I want to focus on just how simple it can be to get your business started online. So we're going to do a little live demo here. So just give me a second to share my other screen. I keep forgetting to adjust the volume stuff when I share my screen. Sorry, folks. Um, I'm not that used to Zoom, but I got this. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. So shopify.com. Um, we actually have a 14 day free trial that you can take advantage of. So you can kind of like explore the platform and really see if it's meant for you without making too much of a commitment. So right away, we can go start our free trial. You're going to put in your email address. So let's put nocha v6 at gmail.com. Um, you can create your password. And then you're going to choose a store name. Now, the store name that you enter here is going to determine your store URL or domain. A domain is essentially your website's address, and it's how customers will find you. So, for example, like Google.com, Facebook.com, people search those addresses when they want to go to those websites. So, if I enter Anoja's test store, um, there we go. So Anoja's test store dot my Shopify dot com. That's going to be my URL. Now, uh, one thing to remember is that this URL also acts as a unique identifier for your store. So that means you can't change it once you have uh, selected it. But don't worry, because you can purchase a custom domain later on. And we'll speak on that in a little bit. So we're going to create our store. And just give it a couple of seconds here. All right, and so here is where uh, some of those poll questions are com gonna come into play. Um, so when we did our poll, we said, I'm not selling yet, right? So I'm not selling products yet, we're gonna select that. And do you wanna sell your products through dropshipping? We didn't do this as a poll question, but for now we'll just say no. And in addition to your Shopify store, where else would you like to sell online? So our top choices were uh, Etsy, eBay, Amazon, and more, Google, and in person. And I'm going, so I'm in Canada, so that's why it's, it's saying Canada, but I'm going to switch over to the US for the sake of this live demo. And I'm, I'm gonna get a warning, but obviously this is just a demo, so 
we're, we're going to just ignore that warning, but make sure that you select the right country when you are actually getting your store started. So we're going to enter our store. And it'll just take a few seconds here for it to get loaded. All right. So right away, we can see in this bottom right corner, a little pop up about our trial period. Um, so once again, the trial period is 14 days um, and you don't need to select a plan until you've gotten to those 14 days. However, if you end up, you know, like putting your site together and you're ready to sell before those 14 days are over, at that point, you will need to select a plan in order to start making sales. But for the 14 days, just play around with the platform, see if it has the features you need and just figure out if it's really the right fit for you. So I'll just go ahead and minimize that. And now currently we are on the homepage and this screen that you're looking at is basically the admin of your Shopify store. It's essentially like the back end. It's where you'll do things like fulfill orders, add products, edit the way your site looks, basically all of the behind the scenes work of running your business. Now, uh, like I said, currently we're on the homepage and on the homepage, typically you'll see important updates about your store. You'll find interesting articles, blog posts. Sometimes the system will even scan your store and do a little diagnosis of things that you could improve um, and it'll give you some suggestions. Um, so let's first thing, how about we go and add a product? So we're going to go to the product section in the left hand side and we're going to do add your products and I'm going to create a necklace and I'm not going to do a paragraph because I'm not the greatest with the word stuff, um, but we'll do that. And then we'll add a, let's see, I have some stock pictures here. There's a picture of a gold necklace that I just got from uh, Burst, which is a uh, uh, software from Shopify that provides free photos for you to use on your website. They're very high quality photos. Um, we can go ahead and just add a price, uh, let's say $125.99. Um, you can select if you want to charge tax on this product or not. You can also add how much this product costs you. So like it says here, customers aren't going to see this, but this is more so for your own bookkeeping records. So you can see really what is your profit. Um, what else do we have here? We have inventory, so you can add a SKU or a barcode. Um, you can track quantity. Let's say, for example, um, on your store, when you get down to zero quantity, you can either have your products just say sold out on your store, or you can even continue selling when it gets to that zero. And in the back end, you'll just see that the number ends up going to the negatives. Um, but yeah, you can continue selling even when out of stock. And let's put some inventory there, physical product, we can put the weight and the the, sh the weight stuff is really important when it comes to the shipping aspect of your business. So you wanna make sure that you're weighing your products accordingly and correctly. Um, this necklace is probably not gonna be five pounds, we'll put five grams. Um, and let's say maybe this necklace has different sizes. So there might be a short, a short version, there might be medium and a long one. So those are just options if you have like, for example, with clothing when you have sizes. Um, and we'll just go ahead and save that. And just like that, you've created your first product. It's really, really a simple process. Um, so we'll do that. Let's maybe Let's go talk about the finances section. Uh, we're not going to talk about everything because there's a lot of things here that we could talk about and it would just take forever. So we won't go over everything, but we'll go over like the, the very important things. So the finances section is where you'll be able to select a payment gate gateway. Now, when you're selling online, you need a payment gateway to process credit cards, um, to take payments essentially. And Shopify has its in-house payment gateway, Shopify payments. And since I'm assuming pretty much everyone here is in the US. Um, Shopify payments is available in the US. And the great thing about Shopify payments is that 
if you are using it, then you're not being charged transaction fees. Whereas if you're using a third party gateway with your Shopify store, then in that case, you might get charged transaction fees. But with Shopify payments, you're not paying any transaction fees. You're only paying the rates for processing credit cards. Um, you can also find stuff here about your billing. Um, there's probably not gonna be too much here right now, but yeah, so there's no bills or anything here, but we can see like I'm on a trial, that's a subscription. Um, what else can we do? Apps. So apps are really important and crucial to Shopify stores as well sometimes. Um, as much as we wish we could have all the features in the world on Shopify, it's simply just not possible. So in that case, when there are certain features that you're interested in that Shopify doesn't have, you can download an app. Um, and apps are just third party apps that are created by our Shopify partners. Um, some of them are free, some of them have subscriptions. Now we can see already that we have the Google app here and that's because earlier when we were signing up for the store, we put down that Google was one of the places we were interested in selling on. So as we can see, the Google app is already installed for us. Now, uh, so sales channels, we have the online store and that's basically your website. Um, there's also Google right there. So the Google sales channel is essentially the same as the Google app right here. And then we also have the point of sale. The point of sale system was also added because we mentioned that we wanted to sell in person as well. So we're gonna click into the online store and this is essentially where you can edit to the way your store looks. So right here, this is the theme template that is currently on this store. A theme template is essentially just a template that determines how your store looks. Shopify has free templates, but there are also paid templates on the Shopify theme store. Um, but the Shopify free templates are awesome. They're great if you're just starting out. And Dawn right here is one of our free templates. So we can go into theme editor and we can basically just edit the store here. Uh, there's this preview inspector tool because sometimes when you're in the theme editor, you might be looking at it and you're kind of like, whoa, what's what's going on? There's like so much here. How do I edit this? Like, what is this, this weird gray image? Like, how do I know where I'm supposed to edit that? So this is where the preview inspector tool comes in handy because you can select different elements and it'll take you directly to the section where you would then you know, just uh, include where you would then just replace the image. So uh, it seems like I was starting a jewelry store, so we'll do accessories and jewelry. And again, these are just stock photos that you can use for your website. And there you go, you got a pretty little picture there. You can edit the words. You can do so many things in the theme editor. You can move sections around. So maybe if you don't want the image banner at the top, you can just move it down. So there's a lot of, just opportunity to customize a store to how you want it to look while also making it look very professional and without the need of you know hiring a developer and spending thousands of dollars to have a, a nice looking website. So that's another really great feature about Shopify is just how flexible you can be with the way your website looks. So uh, yeah, I didn't save anything, but we'll just leave. Now, I also mentioned domains earlier. So when I was talking about the store name, anojasteststore.myshopify.com. Now, if you wanna be an established business, we definitely recommend getting a custom domain. So instead of my domain being anojasteststore.myshopify.com, maybe I just want anojasteststore.com because it just, it just makes you seem like a more independent brand. So you can buy domains through Shopify and I can go in here and type in the domain. And yeah, it's, it's available. I, I assumed it would be available. I don't know why someone would make that their domain for their store. But as we can see, it's available. It's $14 per year. And this just renews on an annual basis for typically it'll be around $14 or whatever price it was that, whatever, whatever price it was when you bought it. Sometimes it can change, so just keep an eye out for that. But typically, it's usually the same price every year. Um, I'm not actually going to buy the domain right now because I, I just don't need it. Um, so we'll go back. And that's just a great way to make your store look more independent. Um, how are we doing for time? Can I ask? My dear Anoja, I think we have two more minutes. OK. <laughs> and I do have that's some fine. questions in there. So. Yeah, and, but this is awesome. I know I'm afraid of of 
Karen coming back in and then <laughs> and then people will say, why are you taking a Noja away? <laughs> but J James no. also has great information. <laughs> Yeah. Oh no, for sure. I'm sure he's got some amazing information, but yeah, it's, it's impossible to do all of this in just one sitting, but that's why we give the 14 day free trial. So definitely take advantage of that folks. Um, and just one last thing I guess I would add is if you ever get confused, our support team is amazing. Uh, all you need to do is search up Shopify help center. And oh, I said contact support right there. This is the help center where you can find a ton of information. Scroll down, contact Shopify support. You'll basically just log in and then you'll have the option to either chat in or phone in or email in and we'll help you out. You don't need to be scared to ask questions. There are no dumb questions. We're really here to help you and it's 24 seven support. So just keep that in mind. Um, but I, yeah, I understand we have some questions. So let us, let's do those. So, uh, whoops, yep. Uh, the first one is, uh, what is the difference between Shopify and Square? Who's someone who's using Square? I can't really comment on that, to be honest, just because I'm not familiar with the Square platform. Um, so it's a bit hard for me to answer a question like that. Um, but I, I guess what I could say, if you if you were to go online and search up like what's the best e-commerce platform, there are tons of articles. Even oh wait, which here, even if you go to the Shopify blog, we have literally an article on what e-commerce platform is best for you. We're we're even like promoting other e-commerce platforms because really all that we care about is making commerce better for everyone and you finding what's good for you. So uh, e-commerce platform, I'm trying to do this as quickly as I can, um, but we definitely have an article in here about what like e-commerce platform is best for you and just gives you a chance to kind of compare the different ones. Um, so the yeah, seven best e-commerce platforms for small businesses in 2022. So again, I can't comment on another platform and how it works, um, but there's plenty of resources online. I'll even, can I send this to the chat maybe? Oh yes, you may. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna send that right here. So yeah, take a look at that. And while you're doing that, Karen, I do have one more question okay, that, that came up and, okay. and, and Oja, the question is, what are the top three, um, challenges that you hear from Shopify customers when it comes to e-commerce and and what would you what will be your words of wisdom I added that part the words of wisdom <laughs> <laughs> all good all good um okay so top three challenges I would say for sure marketing uh marketing is a huge aspect of e-commerce my personal opinion, it's everything. Um, and there's so many different ways that you can market your store. You don't necessarily need tons of money. There are plenty of organic and free methods to market your store. So I definitely say the biggest challenge for most people is the marketing aspect. Um, and it's usually just a lack of knowledge. It's really just like they don't know a lot because most entrepreneurs, like they haven't gone to school for business to like study marketing. So it's really just a learning curve, but it's definitely possible to make it over that hump. So uh, marketing would be one. Um, the next thing I would say is, I feel like marketing is the one that I, I yeah. hear about so often. Um, maybe like if you have a very specific feature that you're looking for when it comes to uh, like how your online website looks. Like I have some merchants who are very particular about like this line needs to be like two inches over. And um, sometimes that means that you do need some coding skills. However, we do have Shopify experts, which are, they're developers who don't necessarily work for Shopify, but there are partners who you can hire to do small jobs, like making little tweaks to your website that do require coding. Um, so if you're just very particular about how your store looks, then sometimes that mm. can be a struggle. And third, what would I say third is? You know, as, as you're thinking of that, we just finished a survey to globally and, and you're right on target. Marketing is one of the biggest challenges that we keep hearing from small businesses from around the world. We, we did it in, in, in 11 geographic countries around, around the globe. And, uh, and the other one also, as you're thinking of that, is also now connecting with how to leverage better social media, which I, I guess is marketing, right? With customers, with new customers. As, as they're yeah. going through that piece. So, Anoja, 
Thank you so much, Karen. I'll turn it back to you, Anoja. Oh, I love you, this. And, and for everybody who's who's online too, uh, as I turn it over to Karen, this video has been recorded, so you can also watch it. And for those that are watching us online too, we'll make certain to follow up with all the links and information that we share. Karen, back to you. Thank you, Maria Luisa, and thank you, Anoja. This was great. Lots of information, uh, lots for everyone to think about. So really appreciate your insights and information. So let's get moving on so we can give James some time too. James, of you want to, thank you. All right, next up is James Bledstone. Thanks, Karen. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'll go ahead and share my screen now and get my presentation up. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about e-commerce, digital strategy, and logistics issues that are commonly faced by businesses selling overseas, uh, which is our main uh, wheelhouse when it comes to clients. Our focus at the U.S. Commercial Service is to help U.S. businesses sell more overseas, and that can also happen through the online sales channels. So. Today, we're going to cover the e-commerce overview, kind of contextualize it so it's more easy for you to uh, approach strategically as a business. We'll cover briefly the five steps of a digital strategy to help you understand uh, this e-commerce sales channel. And then I'll touch briefly on a website globalization review gap analysis service that may be of interest to you and your websites. And then also wrap up with some uh, free online resources to help you get started on your own digital strategy today. So briefly conceptualized, when you think of e-commerce, most people think of the business to consumer aspect of it. The individual consumer purchasing chapstick from Amazon or an individual website. Uh, but what's often not considered is the full upstream of that, the business to business aspect of it. Where are the uh, bulk products for that chapstick, the wax, the carnauba wax, the beeswax, where are they being found and purchased from? Well, chances are they're not going to a catalog to find beeswax, they're Googling beeswax and trying to buy that in bulk. And so when you really think about e-commerce, it is the entire sales channel of any online transaction, be that uh, from crude oil sales and transference of wealth in that, which accounts for a large chunk of B2B, on down to uh, architects uh, selling their services online from their websites, on down to the final product uh, that is being sold to the end consumer. All of this is transpiring online. So what are the main issues then you'll face as a business when trying to sell online? Well, the top five main issues here uh, that we've been able to identify with the help of Statista is that uh, not having a business digital strategy is, is the first one. Uh, so that's something that we try to help out with uh, our digital counseling. Uh, being aware of e-commerce service providers like Shopify uh, as uh, uh, solutions to your business needs is another issue that businesses uh, have an issue with. Um, yes, sorry, Karen. J just let us know when you want those polls. Oh, um, how about uh, after this slide right here? We'll, we'll start with the first poll. Okay. Um, and so with the US Commercial Service, uh, we also help with identifying non-tariff barriers, uh, logistics and shipping issues, and payments like letters of credit, uh, credit card payments, et cetera, giving counsel to businesses on how best to navigate that. And so today's focus, we're going to be focusing on specifically those logistics issues uh, as far as uh, um, what we're looking at. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with the uh, first poll. So um, what are you all primarily selling through online? Um, let's go ahead and see if you're selling mostly through your website, uh, marketplace, social media, or an in-country distribu uh, distributor selling on your behalf. Um, 
And then let's go ahead and see the results after a minute. And then we'll go ahead and do the second one before I segue into the issue statistics. We'll get a feel for the audience here. I know we can get to 60% answer. We're almost there, James. So <laughs> I will end it. We are, there we are. All right, excellent. And so it looks like the majority of attendees are selling through the website. That's good. Uh, online marketplace, social media, that's also good. Uh, you don't want to exclusively uh, select one or the other sales channels. You want to spread it across like a ratio uh, and go to where your consumers are. Uh, let's and, go ahead. And, and James, and oh, I sorry. should say someone, someone did say that they do more than one. Too. So we didn't put it as an option, and that might be the other <laughs> option, yes. too, but just as awareness. <laughs> yes, and hopefully everybody is doing more than one sales channel. You're doing website sales in addition to uh, social media, marketplace, and or distributor, uh, whatever sells your product, essentially. Well, let's go ahead and do the uh, second poll real quick. Uh, what kind of e-commerce logistics solutions do you use currently? Um, so... Are you using a freight forwarder, 3PL, 4PL, customs broker, uh, full service, or are you in need of introductions to a service provider? Again, this is uh, the number two issue faced by businesses out there uh, that actually pleads into uh, number three that we're covering today. And I tell you, as far as shipping and logistics go, it's not an issue just for online. It's business in general, exporting in general, uh, you will always run into these issues. Uh, it will be shipping logistics and payments. Definitely, and we're almost there and getting higher percentage. Great, 60%, so almost 58. <laughs> And it looks like the majority of people need introductions. So that seems like we at the US Commercial Service might have some work cut out for us if you uh, work with us to help expand your exports uh, and sales overseas. That's something we'll need to uh, introduce you to with our e-commerce business service provider directory and the service providers we've screened through there. Um, some common e-commerce logistics issues that businesses will face. So what are the specifics? Well, obviously it's getting it across the border uh, is the number one issue. Customs, uh, paperwork that needs to be filled out, the taxes that still apply, even though you're selling it online, there is no legal difference between an online traction, uh, transaction and an offline transaction. So whatever rules, regulations, labeling requirements, uh, restrictions applied before in offline environment, none of that goes away in the online environment. It still applies. It's just whether or not you're paying attention to that. <laughs> Outside of that, uh, another big issue uh, out there for, especially for retailers, is returns. How does that get handled? Especially if you use something like fulfillment by Amazon. Um, I've heard well, I've read news stories that Amazon destroys something on order of $8 million per day of materials that are being returned uh, because it's cheaper to destroy it rather than ship it back to the U.S. due to logistics costs. So things you want to take into consideration there. Um, some other uh, uh, solutions out there that uh, businesses are using is the freight forwarder. So that's the, the main service provider sector that they're looking at. A lot of businesses are just going with a straight forward, uh, freight forwarder. UPS, FedEx, USPS, DHL is a foreign operated uh, version of that. Uh, 3PL, 4PL provider, you're getting more into the niche areas of uh, uh, last mile delivery uh, type uh, services. And then uh, simply a customs compliance specialist. Uh, that's more for if you have restricted items. Uh, you got dual use, maybe you sell shotguns or airplane parts. Um, this is where you would definitely need a customs compliance specialist. Uh, and then uh, less and less companies are actually going with a full service e-commerce specialist simply because um, there's not that many out there as far as full suite of services. You kind of have to hodgepodge them 
uh, together uh, when it comes to getting all of your products finally to that last mile destination. What products are selling online overseas? Well, looking more closely at a home, uh, looking at the USMCA markets, uh, compared to the US in Mexico, they are buying more digital media, movies, uh, games, content online, as opposed to uh, other uh, e-services and e-travel, uh, like in Canada, where the majority of what's being spent outside of business to consumer products is on e-services and e-travel as opposed to digital media. So there's slight differences and nuances between the markets as far as what they're buying online and how they're buying it. And so it really behooves you to do some market research, reach out to a US commercial service specialist, Karen, for example, and see where your products are being sold uh, predominantly either in Mexico or Canada, for instance, and then focusing down from there. Uh, so really there's a lot of information out there for you to learn from the data available. So before we get too far along here exploring e-commerce, we've also got to take a pause and understand the growth phases for e-commerce. Uh, the majority of you are familiar with localization, this term uh, where you localize your website, you translate it. This is actually a last step, uh, phase three in a three-step process. Uh, you really want to start out with a process called internationalization. And it's often overlooked because it's the most simple, basic, and cheapest option. Uh, with internationalization, what you want to do is just simply make sure that your website is functioning properly, that there's no uh, unseen metadata issues out there that make your website not show up in a search when it should. So you're paying attention to these detailed parts uh, for search engine optimization, in addition to making sure that your website is structured to facilitate uh, international translation and transaction. So you're drawing the visitor in and down a pathway towards a sale, a direct sale, or reaching out to you to make a sale uh, later on. As you do market research with Karen at the US Commercial Service, uh, the local small business development centers, uh, wherever, and you're looking at your website analytics to see where your international visitors are coming from, you're then going to focus on regionalization. That's when you're going to make modifications, local landing pages, uh, focusing on those specific areas that you want to target overseas with the understanding that the next step is then going to be localization, where again, you're going to rely on your website visitor statistics to justify the expense, the large expense of localizing your website via sales and traffic and conversion rates. And so you work towards localization, starting out with internationalization, uh, working towards regionalization and back and forth with regionalization and localization. So how's the best way to approach this? Well, you need a digital strategy uh, first and foremost. And this digital strategy should not be groundbreaking information. Uh, it's in fact uh, common sense steps, uh, mostly swiped from regular business strategy, uh, but applied to the online sales channel. So here's the five steps right here. Uh, in detail, first you must determine, and this may seem obvious, uh, but you must determine what you're going to do with your website uh, before you get started. Are you selling directly from your website or are you informing to lead towards a sale? Uh, I was speaking with a client yesterday who was uh, doing bulk shipments of collagen lotion, I believe. They didn't want to sell to the individual consumer. They wanted to sell pallet loads. And so they weren't necessarily selling their product directly from the website, but informing to lead towards a sale. Reach out to us. Let's sell you this pallet shipment of collagen lotion. Uh, you'll also want to do some market research on what your competitors are doing overseas. Uh, and if it's working for them, copy. Uh, there's no harm in that. Uh, you'll also want to understand your target market and demographics. Who is coming to buy your product? Uh, what's their age group? What are the uh, specifics about them? Where do they go? What are their habits? You need to understand this uh, in order to craft your website uh, to attract and acquire more overseas consumers. That's the whole purpose of this. 
Um, the second step, once you've kind of sketched out roughly what you want to do with your website, where you want to go with it, you then want to do some form of search engine optimization, SEO. Uh, it doesn't matter if you do our search engine optimization service, the gap analysis, or you go with somebody else. Um, I've heard there's a few other services out there looking at internationalization as well. Um, you want to do one of those and you want to do it at least once a year to make sure that your website is actually operating because believe it or not, websites are not set it and forget it. Things go wrong, things get broken, things get updated that are out of your hands that don't get updated because it's out of your hands and your website is directly in your hands. And so looking at your website with a search engine optimization tool, a web crawler of some sort, analyzing it to make sure that when an overseas consumer enters in the right search terms and your website dead to rights should be number one for that based on your product services, abilities and desires, but it does not show up there because of those metadata issues. You wanna fix those metadata issues so you do show up in that search. Um, and it's a complicated process that we explore with you and hopefully help you understand by explaining how these search engines actually work. Now, once you've addressed those issues, you see what is there and more importantly, what is missing and needs to be there for the search robots, uh, you then want to address these issues in step three and actually work on your backend digital infrastructure. And this is where you would look to service providers like Shopify. Uh, who spoke before me, uh, if you have a website that maybe is your homebrew website that somebody built back in 1997 and it is just a pain and you want to switch over to something, at this point in the process, that's when you would look towards Shopify, WordPress, uh, Squarespace, WooCommerce, BigCommerce. There's a whole slew of website hosts out there uh, that you could then also look to to then transfer to. Or if your website's working just fine and you notice that there's, uh, well, sorry, I should have meant that, working just fine for you, but there's metadata issues that are hindering its performance. This is also when you would look towards digital marketers, website developers, essentially the same function uh, when it comes to these repairs, making sure that information is on the back end for search bots to find. That is the number one issue. Um, from there, once everything's working great and you know for a fact it's operating great, then you want to focus your efforts, your digital marketing resources on choosing your e-commerce sales channel sales mix. Is it determined that the majority of your sales and traffic are coming through your website? Then you want to allocate the majority of your spending and resources to your website. Is it determined that social media is growing for you? Then you want to allocate some of that spend and effort towards a social media channel. This is where you decide that and incorporate market research, market intelligence, uh, consultants to basically read the tea leaves and see what's going on uh, with sales, products, and consumers in your target areas. And then last but not least, you wanna establish some sort of key performance indicators along this process. You wanna be looking at your website analytics, commonly called Google Analytics because it's ubiquitous. Uh, it's a very um, uh, common uh, service out there with the Google Analytics, it's free. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. There are other analytics programs out there that take the same data and reinterpret it or present different perspectives on it as well. Um, all are great and all are fine, but you need to be looking at one of them and tying some sort of visitorship from your website to your sales so you understand what conversion rates you have going on. You understand how much money your effort is generating in the online sales channels. This is the most essential part. So I touched briefly on search engine optimization. Do you know if your website is even reaching? international audiences for search. Well, outside of explaining how a search engine optimization works, which I don't believe I have time for today, uh, we have a gap analysis service 
that uh, we do as a US commercial service that will basically help you to understand that component and why you should care about search engine optimization and your website and how that relates to acquiring more consumers online, specifically overseas, which is our focus. Um, what this gap analysis service does is takes two web crawlers, uh, search bot analogs, looks at your website, sees what's there, more importantly, what's not there and needs to be there. And then we take our institutional best knowledge on uh, best practices for internationalization, international sales and exports that we've been experts in in the better part of four decades and apply that uh, to your website and your business strategy. And then we also provide follow-on counseling along with the uh, e-commerce BSP directory. So in this process, we're taking a tool, looking at your website, identifying what's wrong with it and needs to be fixed and providing you with local service providers or national service providers that can fix those specific problems uh, should you so choose. On top of that, depending upon your state, and I'm not sure how Texas operates, uh, but the federal step grant program, which is administered by each state can be used to fix these areas identified in this report and pay these service providers. So it's a very valuable uh, uh, meeting for businesses looking to take their business to that next level and actually make their website the overseas customer acquisition tool that they want it to be, that they need it to be for their business. Um, this service is $100 uh, for the majority of you businesses out there. Uh, if you're medium or large, I believe it goes on up to three and 500 uh, for this service respectively. Uh, but again, the majority of you are gonna be in the $100 range. Uh, I would highly doubt if any of you would be in the $300 range. Very affordable, uh, especially with the repairs that you will obviously need afterwards. Uh, some resources for you real quick as I wrap up. Uh, we have a blog project that I show to all of our clients after I deliver the gap analysis report service to them. Uh, this is our practice what we preach example in when we advise our clients to create more keywords and more backlinks, we show them this as that example of what they need to do. And so in this, we are doing exactly the same thing for you, our clients. We are structuring our articles in ways that are search engine optimization friendly and are titled in ways that could possibly show up in Google search as answers. So that's the basic tactics that you wanna use. And also these articles written by our colleagues, our trade specialist colleagues, have a lot of valuable information on things, uh, variety of trade topics from the rise of e-commerce in Africa on down to understanding search engine optimization and how that works on an international scale. If you're looking for more market research, free market research, uh, we have the e-commerce resource guide report index on trade.gov. This consolidates all of the e-commerce sections out of our country commercial guides, uh, full two to 300 page reports on countries. This is the e-commerce section out of those large tomes of country guides. Uh, put into one concise area. And then lastly, uh, wrapping up, we have our uh, services and programs here uh, for US exporters. As you heard before, the Global Diversity Export Initiative is an administrative uh, priority here under which uh, the underserved communities to include the rural communities is included in that. So if you are a rural business out in Texas, uh, and you are interested in this and more, if you contact the Rural Export Center and the RAISE program, you can actually get a gap analysis as a part of the suite of services that comes with that RAISE program, again, for rural businesses. Uh, we also have a lot of initiatives behind climate and clean technology solutions. Uh, so please do read more about that. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, to me or directly to Karen uh, at the local US trade office. James, thank you so much. That was great. We really appreciate this. We have a question and I'm also gonna put in chat, uh, since all of you are in Texas, if you do want any of these services, 
uh, how you can reach some of our offices. I think we had another couple of polls if we want to put those up real quick. Yes, please. Uh, Maria Luis. Uh, Sorry about that. I don't do polls very often, so I forgot about it. Uh, so how much of you know about website internationalization already and uh, are looking to learn more? So we'll, we'll uh, see who wants to get follow-up after this. Um, if you are interested in learning more, you do get to get a gap analysis from me uh, delivered to you about your business website through Karen. And while we're waiting for those polls, maybe we can look at this one question. Absolutely. Uh, the e-commerce strategies are very helpful. Do these also apply to, whoops, I can't see it. Oops. Uh, these e-commerce are helpful. Do these also apply to large price tag products over 10,000K or just for smaller products? It applies to everything. Uh, large prices, uh, small prices. Um, this digital strategy is for business. So if you're a business, which I think you are, it would apply to you. Um, the strategy between a $10,000 product and a $10 product doesn't vary. Um, really, it's just the mechanics behind the scene. Um, who's, who, who are you going to get as a service provider to handle your $10,000 transactions? That's, that's the bigger question. Uh, because I know certain credit card companies can be issues. I know certain payment service providers, um, PayPal can be issues uh, in that as well that I've heard. Uh, so that I think is something that's more unique to the high dollar items uh, out there. Uh, but the strategy, the approach, uh, the planning, all the same. All righty. Well, we're one minute in. Uh, Maria Luisa, anything else that you see? Oh, one more poll, sorry. We had one more poll. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so how many of you out there would like to learn more about this oh, gap analysis? Relaunch, one moment, I think. Okay, there it is. Let's see, so, how are the participants feeling? <laughs> Yes, this is a, a shameless plug on I know, saying, James. engaging <laughs> you had, your interest. <laughs> you had an amazing presentation and while well, we're getting the, the results and, and to you and, and and Karen, thank you so much. Very, very interesting. And, and, and James, I love the information that you shared because I can tell you from a UPS side, we see so many of these things that you, that you highlighted and you're right one of the top uh, challenges for businesses right now is the logistics cost of, of delivering. And, and it is fascinating. And, and I wish we had another module just to talk about capacity and everything that is, that the challenges that are there, but something for the small businesses to be aware, all businesses be aware, manage your inventory. And look, James, everybody wants to hear more about you and do the follow up the internationalization the gap analysis. So we will be sending you the, the, the link uh, for that part. So with that, I think Karen, uh, James, thank you so much. You were awesome. And Noja and James, you gave us so much knowledge, right, Karen? Absolutely. Great presentations. We really appreciate all your information, intelligence, and knowledge. And we want to thank everyone here that joined today. And you'll hope we'll join us again next Thursday. Here we go for our next one, module four, freight forwarders and customs brokers. So tune in again next week. And Very exciting we'll topic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a nerd on customs, so. <laughs> um, so yeah. We, so, we will hear Maria Luisa and, and uh, who's and our Ke speaker? And Kelly, Kelly. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Thank you. Thank you all uh, for the questions that we didn't answer. We will get back to you. And um, I always say this, may the force be with all of you for the rest of the week. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks everyone, bye.